In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily create something like this in Photopea. So this is the thumbnail I made for this video, and I'm going to show you how to make something similar. So I'm going to start off with a new document. This is just a standard document um, with, I've actually got a slight background texture here, but ignore that. You, you just do this on whatever background you want. So the first thing I want to do is press T for my type tool, or if you don't want to use the shortcut, you can go to the icon on the left hand side. And I'm going to just click in the middle. I'm just going to start typing something. Now the font I've got selected, if I go to the properties here, it's called Moonget, which I don't think comes with Photop. It's one I downloaded from a free stock site. Um, sorry, a free font site. Um, I'll try and put a link to it in the description if I can find it. But any slightly heavy font will work well. You don't want anything too thin or wispy for this or too scripty. So anything that comes with Photop, there's lots of nice chunky fonts. So just just use something that's got a good bit of thickness to it and a good bit of um, heft, I would say. So let's just start typing. He says, not working. Photo P. Okay. And it's already defaulted to a color that I used in the thumbnail or similar to the thumbnail, so that's fine. So now we've got the word photo P just in live text. So we're going to double click next to the name in the layer. So right next to where it says photo P in the layers panel, double click to get to our layer styles. Now this was added quite a while ago, but I actually overlooked it for, a, for quite a bit. And it's this 3D section at the bottom. So we used to have to do this um, manually by repeating lots of versions of this. And I think one of my older videos I showed you, but now we can click on the word 3D and we'll actually click on the section itself to bring up the properties. Now I'm going to go through this one by one so you can understand. There's only a few things to change, but it's actually quite flexible. So you've got blend mode and your color of your 3D element. And it looks kind of bad right now because it's red and red on pink doesn't really work. So I'm just going to change it to something like that, just for contrast, but we'll adjust this in a second. So that's my color blend mode. Opacity, of course, is as you would expect. Angle. We can change this to affect the angle of our 3D effect. As something that we like. Distance. It's basically how deep it is or how thick that 3D effect is. And you can go, you can go quite far. Let's see if it'll let us actually override the maximum. Sometimes a photo P, if you manually type, yeah, there we go. You can actually go further than the natural constraint in the um slider which in this is 200 but anyway now this gets quite slow because it's basically making dozens and dozens of iterations of the font in the, in the background behind the scenes to create this 3d effect so it can get a little sluggish but it's normally completely workable so that's distance so nice and straightforward then you've got shrink now think of this as like a perspective so it's it's sort of making the 3d effect go towards like an invisible horizon line or vanishing point. And if you drag it up quite high, you might lose the effect because it will go behind the text a lot. So then you might have to crank the distance up to really sort of see where what's happening with that and we'll move the angle. So you can see if we drag up the shrink, it's shrinking away to uh, towards like a vanishing point in the distance. So you can make something look like it's um, 3D um, and it's coming from a distance, right? So if we put that shrink right back down, it's going to look like it's just right in front of us because the 3D effect appears to um, terminate a lot closer. Hope that makes sense. So between the distance and the shrink, you can get something with some real perspective or you can get more of a graphical kind of flat thing. Like I quite like that, but the, the shrink option definitely has its uses. So now we're going to come down to the last bit at the bottom, which is light and darken. So I'll start with the darken first because it's probably the most useful. So the darken is it will add shading to the extremity of the 3D effect. So basically it won't be based on the light angle at all, which is why I wanted to do it first. See how it's making it darker towards the base of the th of the 3D element. So the bit furthest away from the, from the text in this case, and you can't change the color of this. I mean, you can obviously play around with the blend modes, but it's not like you can't change the color that it fades off to darken. So it's just, it's meant to give some separation, a little bit of um, more more 3D effects. If you put it to zero, put darken to zero, it's just like a blob of color. 
So we introduced Darken, and this is just a taste, just until it gets a nice sort of 3D look. If you drag it too much, it goes like black and a bit dirty looking. So this is completely to taste. I like mine around 50% normally, just under, but it will depend on image. And light, this is where you can adjust angle of a light source kind of hitting the 3D element of the text. Now, where I don't find this particularly useful is it doesn't play off the darken. So if I drag the darken down, see the darken is still affecting the sort of the distance further away from the text. So the darken is still darkening the 3D effect from the ground up, whereas the light is obviously coming at an angle from the side. So it starts to not really make a huge amount of sense. You can you can do a little bit just to highlight the to highlight the colors, but I just find that it looks quite nice with sort of the default settings in the middle. But again, that's something to play around with. And again, you can change the blending modes to play around with that as well. So once we have our general 3D effect done, which is that super quick and easy, there are some other things we can do to kind of help make the text or whatever it is, because it can't, it doesn't have to just be text. It can be icons or graphics or anything you can apply this to just to make it pop off a little bit. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to go to stroke. I'm going to click stroke. Let me just zoom out a little bit more. Sorry. Now what I quite like to do here, and again, this is just my preference. It's just, I've been playing around with, but I quite like to select the color of the main text and then just either drag it down into a slightly darker shade of that or drag it up into a slightly lighter shade just to give some separation. And I'll change that position mode to inside because we, we don't want it to start going outside of the 3D effects. It looks a bit strange. You can see there we can get this nice standoff now. We've got a nice bold effect. And again, th this bit now is completely just experimenting and seeing how else you can um, enhance the look of the 3D effect with some other tools. And then you could do like for the um, for the thumbnail, I did bevel in, bevel and emboss and I just played around. Let me see if I can remember what I did here. So I think I did inner bevel. Um, I think it was smooth. Now I I think I'll put the angle something like that. Let's see depth. Play around with the size. Oh, that's way too much. And a hint for bevel and emboss, by the way, while I'm on here, just a bonus tip is when you're using something like this where you can pick the color for the highlight and the shadow like we can here, don't just use black and white because it looks it doesn't look doesn't look very good. So for the highlight color here, or next to screen, there's a screen, click on it select the color of whatever you're applying the effect to, and then just move to a brighter version. You can go towards white. If we do that and click OK, and then similarly with the shadow color, we'll click on the black and we'll just click on the main text color to just get a reference of what that is and then drag it down towards the dark. So it's still going dark, but it's not going to make it black. It's going to keep it more tonal with the actual text and that makes more sense. It just looks good. So I think for this, I played with the contour as well. This is a completely other tutorial here, but just so you know, in the bevel and emboss, you can play around with different, um, different contour graphs to sort of get different effects from the same setting. So you can just experiment, play around, see what happens if you make the size of things bigger, if you make them smaller change the depth. I said, I'm, I can't remember exactly what I did for the thumbnail now, which is kind of the beauty of it. So I'm just um, going to change the angle now though, because to get a small change to the angle can make a big difference when you're playing with these kind of effects. And um, let's, let's get something there. I quite like that. So we can take down the shadow. And I'm going to click OK on that for the moment. So we've created this 3D effect now for our photo P text. And the beauty of this is, and the beauty of it being built into the 
um, layer styles is it's completely live. And so what I mean by that is we could go and type, um, we could go and type something completely different and it will retain that effect. And also the same goes if we were to change the font or the color or anything like that. So we could go to this, whatever it is. Now, see, with fonts like this, it doesn't work. Anything that's kind of got broken elements, holes, gaps, and also very thin fonts. So if I do something else, so this one called Cookies and Milk, it kind of, you lose the 3D effect, really. It looks a bit too, it looks a bit too thin. So free to try it on anything that's got a bit of, yeah, so that works quite well, that kind of um, stencil type font. But you can also do this effect on multiple things. Like I said, icons, objects. It doesn't have to be text, but it's just a very versatile and um, I think a very good effect to have built in.